Okay, I wanna um, I wanna look at how I organize my pastels, both for in the studio and in the field. Um, and when you see all this, I don't want you to get discouraged or overwhelmed or daunted. This is a lot of color. Um, this is palette that I've you know, built up and figured out over the years. And, and I'm still evolving with how I organize my pastels. Um, this is a never ending journey. You can see I've got reds, greens, blues, and yellows, and then just some uh, black and gray colors over here. Um, I try as much as I can to, to have a bullseye towards the center with my lightest lights in the center and then work towards the darks. And I try to, as much as I can also to divide warm and cool. Um, you can see with the greens, I have warmer greens. Some of these are earthy greens that have a little bit of orange or red mixed in with them, you know, colors like this, where it's, yeah, it's kind of in the green family, but um, it's muted or it's got a lot of warmth to it. Um, and then as you move out here, you're getting your brighter, lighter greens, and then you're moving back here to your blue greens. It's not a perfect rainbow. I could work harder on getting it exactly right. But um, so now I know these are, you know, these are greens with a little bit more blue in it, greens with a little bit more yellow or um, even orange in it. Um, and so that way I can, I can, as I'm painting, I can think about like, oh, I need a cool green. I know to grab up here. Um, same thing with the blues. Um, you know, you've got your turquoise blues, your violets, and then you're just more straight blues, more of your cobalt, ultramarine kinds of blues. Um, and then same thing on the yellows. And you can see that, um, you know, the ones I use a lot in, in the blue families because of skies, I tend to use a lot of very light blues. A light turquoise blue is great. I use it all the time, you know, so something in that range. Um, so very light, a lot of white mixed in with that. Um, as you come out, you can see the darker blues, like something like that. That is a really intense, saturated blue. Um, it's a really strong color. I might use it for accents. I'm, I'm generally not going to use it all that much for the kind of work that I do. Now, if you're going to be more of a colorist, you might find a way to use that color a lot. Same thing with this, you know, very dark purple. It's a very saturated color, even though it's low and dark and low in value and dark. So um, I don't use that as much as the lighter ones. Uh, in the green family, it, it, it's also true where a lot of these colors that are in the middle here get used a fair amount. Um, some of the brighter greens get used. Uh, in the landscape, um, you know, and as you, the thing about um, saturation, and we'll talk more about this as we go, but the saturation that the most pigmented the color gets is at a light value with the greens and yellows. But when you go to the blues, it's a darker value. So that's something just to keep, tuck in the back of your mind. We'll talk a lot about that later. I'm gonna take out um, a couple field easels here. And talk about that. So this is um, this is I've taken one of Brian Mark Taylor's easels, a Strata easel, um, and I have um, set it up for pastel. And I have two side trays. One side tray um, has just more random colors, extra colors. You know, I threw in some brighter colors, um, those just in case colors that I might only use once in a while. Um, I'm not going to show you that here, just because I want you to get the sense of. Um, the color organization. This one's a little bit better organized than my bigger setup. Um, so you see here white in the center, radiating out towards um, your lighter blues down to your darker blues, turquoise blues. This is more of your cobalt blues. Moving towards your violets, pinks. You can see there's not much red in here. I have some, some more reds on the side trays, but it's just red doesn't show up in the landscape very often. Um, earth colors in this corner. So my darks and my earth colors are here. And then for me, the greens, dark greens here, um, radiating out towards a cooler green. So you can see that's pointing towards the blue. Blue is a cooler color. And then radiating towards 
the warmer greens towards the yellow. Yellow is a warmer color. See that? So cooler, warmer. So that's one of the things that we'll be talking about a lot is how to understand your colors and how they function together in the landscape. So this is a, a well-organized palette ready to go. Um, if you're all interested in ever doing this, this, there's foam on the bottom, foam on the sides, and then I have foam from an old pastel set on top, and I just fold that down, voila, and it's ready to go for in the field. Now, um, I have a slightly bigger setup in the field, for in the field. Um, this is an Edgeman easel. Um, it's, it's a tank. Um, it's a good easel. Another one that people, uh, I see a lot of pastelists use, I just haven't had one, um, is a Heilman easel. Those work very well. Um, so this is, this easel is actually built for pastel. It's just, um, it's, like I said, it's a beast. Um, they have a smaller version of this. What's nice is you can have this right there, but you can see the same similar organizing principle as I have for the other ones. Although this one, I'm, I'll, I'm just not as organized with this one. Maybe it's because as, as I get more space and get messier. So your greens, your uh, reds, and, uh, and then more your pale colors over here. And then if you can see this, um, your blues and your violets. So, and then this one, you can put some erasers or anything else in that. So that's how I use that. Um, again, this one, you have these trays. Move that down like that. And then make sure that those are on securely because I've had, I sometimes I've forgotten and had all the pastels dump out. And then I can fold that back up and back here. This pops in, that folds over, and you know, that's directions for getting the back set up. And again, it's ready to go. Much bigger easel. So a couple other things just with color um, to think about. It's really challenging to start building uh, a good palette that uh, will be individual to you. Um, and each one of you is going to go in a different direction. You know, I'm, um, I like color, but I'm not, uh, I'm not a phobist. I don't do super, um, chromatic, rich, uh, colored paintings. Um, I tend to be more naturalistic with my color. So this is just, uh, you know, somewhat random example of a pastel set, um, that I recently purchased. These are Diane, Diane Townsend thin line pastels. Um, and you can see that the colors here tend to be quite bright. I wanted some brighter colors. I just wanted to add some, some uh, more exciting colors to my palette. These are not going to be used all that often in a landscape. Um, you know, they're nice to have. But the challenge of getting pastel sets is sometimes you, you look online and you see all these beautiful colors and you go, oh, look at that. That really pops. Well, the colors that end up getting used more in a landscape, the workhorses, I would call them, are these subtler colors, something like this, something like this, um, you know, a color like that. You know, this is, this is one that I would definitely use in the landscape. Whereas some of these brighter ones, it can happen. I get really excited when I can use a color like that. Um, but it doesn't happen. These saturated colors don't get used nearly as much. So you want to be thinking about building up a collection of these more subtle colors, um, and then having a handful of brighter, stronger colors. Um, one of the things that I do when I'm working, um, this is probably a color to take this out and put these colors back into their places. Okay. So, um, as I'm working on a pastel, I'll take one of these, this is just an old pastel box. Um, and as I'm working on a studio pastel, I'll just plop the colors that I'm using in that box and keep them in there for the duration of working on a painting or a couple of paintings. And then when I'm done, I just take them and I put them back into, you know, after maybe every couple of 
pictures, I put them back into their place. So that way I have colors readily available that I'm using. Um, we'll talk more about pastel brands as we go, um, but pastels are organized, or I mean, pastel brands um, go from hard pastels to soft pastels. So, and um, hard pastels can be really good for um, underpainting and, um, you know, for, for getting in color to, on your first pass on the paper when you're not trying to layer up. Um, so good examples of that are Holbein. Um, we'll go over some other ones. They, these are some older ones that I have that are Grumbacher that are fairly hard. Um, most of the pastels that you see here are the traditional soft pastels. So um, these are Blue Earth. You've got some uh, um, Unison, Sennelier, Schminke, um, you know, a whole variety of soft pastels. I like having a variety. They all behave a little bit differently. And for me, I'm more concerned with getting the right color of a soft pastel than with um, brand loyalty. Um, there's a lot of great pastel brands right now. Um, and you can see a little bit more organizing here, um, or lack of organizing. Um, in this case, uh, this table is a little bit small. I used to have a bigger one, but the space constraints I have right now, I wanted to have a smaller table. And so um, I, I had some more pastels that I, that I want to be able to use. And so I organized them a little differently here. I just organized my greens and my grays here and then random other colors in the middle here. So I'm always trying to think about getting, in one way or another, getting colors grouped together so that they're easy to grab, um, easy to see, so that you're not so that you're not just grabbing a color because you can't find the right one. Um, so the more you learn about these organizing principles, finding a way to organize your 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 workstation, um, the happier you will be with what you put on the paper.